Okay, so let's continue our discussion on scattering experiments in high energy physics. So let me um, say a few words before I go to this uh, topic of constructing the initial and final states. So first thing is that when we collide particles, these particles will have some uh, reasonably well defined momentum and also they will be uh, reasonably localized in space also. Okay, by this I mean that um, you do not deal with um, states which are eigenstates of momentum for example. Okay, you rather deal with states, I am thinking of a single particle state which have, which have uh, momentum which are very well defined. So, you can say that this is this is an electron or a positron or whatever particle is moving with this much of momentum. But when you make that statement, you do not mean that it really has that momentum. Okay? It me you mean that it has a spread in momentum okay, which is much smaller than the uh, mean momentum that it has. Okay? So, when we say that it has a reasonably well defined momentum, what we mean is that the spread in the momentum is very small compared to the central value of the momentum. And also when you are, when you say that I have fired an electron, okay, it is coming, going to come out of the electron gun or whatever, okay, and you know that it was within the gun, it is not like you do not know where it was in the entire universe, it was there at that time. But of course, you have uncertainty relations. So, there is uh, uncertainty in position, but an uncertainty in, in position is very small. Okay? So, it is rough, well localized at some point in space and also well localized in momentum space. Okay? So, it has a well defined momentum. So, which means that when we construct states which scatter, I should construct states with um, well look um, well defined. By well defined, I do not mean uh, precise exactly one fixed momentum. I am allowing for some spread. Well defined momentum and position. Also, we are doing quantum field theory and we have interactions. So, in principle, you can have any number of particles coming together and interacting to give whatever final state you are looking at. Okay? So, you may have several particles coming together and interacting okay, in a region. So, these are all particles which are participating in collision. Okay? and then they give out some final state. Let me uh, draw the final states by dotted lines. Okay? So, let us say they give, give out some final state. So, you can have several particles that collide together, but typically what will be relevant is that we study only collision of two particles. Okay? So, we do not uh, consider scattering of, uh, I mean uh, we do not consider an incoming state which has more than two particles which are undergoing a collision. Okay? So, we are going to look at a scattering of two uh, initial state in which you have two particles. Okay? So, that is an approximation because such events can also occur, but we are not going to include them. Okay? So, yeah, so that is an approximation. So, even though one can collide more than two particles, we will ignore okay, such collisions and we will only look at collisions of two particles. Okay, so, now what we should do is now we should construct an initial state that has two particles. 
okay and by this statement i mean what i mean is that i should construct a heisenberg state a state in heisenberg picture and remember uh, a, a state in heisenberg picture is same as a state in schrodinger picture at time t equal to 0 okay we have been referring to time t equal to 0 so these two are same things but of course uh, states in Heisenberg picture, picture do not evolve with time. There is no only operators evolve in ti with time. So the interpretation should be that if you were to take that state at time t equal to zero or equivalently the Heisenberg state, and then look at the same state in Schrodinger picture because in Schrodinger picture this is a state at t equal to zero and evolve with Schrodinger equation or or the the unitary operator e to the minus i h t and evolve it backwards in time then when you go far back in time these um, that state represents two well localized uh, particles which are far apart from each other okay that was the interpretation that we gave so that's a state which we want to construct now okay so we need to construct initial state okay and uh, that's what i'm going to do so before i construct the, the initial state which contains two particles okay i will start looking at first a single particle Okay, and I will do so in free theory. It will be easier to understand that way. So let's begin with free theory. But remember, there is no collision happening in free theory. In free theory, nothing happens. Even if you have two particles, they come close to each other. They just pass through each other. Right? This particle, if it is not interacting with the, this one, there is no way it can tell that I am here and no, I am do not go through me. It will just go through it because there is nothing else that can happen. So free theory that is where first we will look at things. So the field phi, the operator phi is d cube k over 2 pi 3 halves then a factor of 1 over 2 omega k then you have a of k e to the minus i k dot x so that's a 4 uh, vector k mu and that's x mu and that's the k mu x mu plus a dagger k e to the i k dot x sorry okay now what we do is we act this field operator phi remember a and a daggers are operators so phi is also an operator we act this on the free vacuum okay and this is what i define as the state phi i'll just this is a state phi acting on ket 0 gives you a state and that state i'm labeling as ket phi so what is that that is uh, a annihilates the vacuum this is free theory remember a annihilates the vacuum so only a dagger acting on ket 0 gives you something and now i am interested in um, so let me put a label t here okay i am interested in phi ket phi which is basically you put t equal to 0 okay so the definition is Um, I want to look at phi and it is defined as okay sorry again so I'm looking at the field at time t equal to 0 and then this acts on the vacuum and this gives you integral d cube k over 2 pi 3 half okay 
then this term does not contribute anything it hits the vacuum gives you zero a dagger acting on vacuum creates a single particle state with momentum k and recall the normalization we had normalized them according to this so we had root 2 omega k a k dagger acting on vacuum that is what we call as um, ket k okay that was the single particle state in free theory so you have to have a root 2 omega k above so i should divide by root 2 omega k and that gives you 1 over 2 omega k then e to the um, time component because i am putting t equal to 0 so that time component goes away and you have e to the minus i k dot x and then you have ket k okay this is something which we saw in the previous course also first course and you see that ket phi this state is actually a state which has which is a linear combination of all the states all the eigenstates of the momentum operator right this ket k has a fixed momentum k and we are summing over all such states so um, and uh, what does this represent this represents this ket phi represents a particle which is localized at point x so it's really there it's it's not uh, it's not like it is around there but it is really at, at point x okay and you see that you have spread over entire momentum range and that's something also we saw in the previous course that we can interpret this as as a state which localized completely a particle at x and actually i should i wanted to do a little different thing so i am sorry i'm going to change i'll put a not here x not okay so ket phi is defined as this it will be helpful to do this so here it is so my particle is localized at x not that's the definition of ket phi okay so let me write down represents a a state um so it represents represents a particle localized completely localized at x not at time t equal to 0 okay i have put t equal to 0 already and how about uh, what happens to this in momentum space as you see it's completely localized it, it's a sum over all momenta so it's also represents a particle that is delocalized in momentum space meaning there is you cannot ascribe any momentum to it okay you cannot assign such a any any momentum okay but that is not what we want that's not very useful for us because this is not how particles in the real world behave right in the real world they are uh, localized in space and also they have well defined momentum which right now this state doesn't have so you want to also have localization in momentum space so that's what i'm going to do that's the goal so i construct a state which is get f and what's that so i take phi 0 x so at time i am constructing the state at t equal to 0 right because we are looking at heisenberg states so i take phi 0 x and act on vacuum so this creates a particle localized completely at x but now i want to delocalize a bit okay around x naught so I, what i do is i integrate over all x but i should multiply with a function f of x 
some function f of x and what should that function do that function should localize the particle at x naught so what i should do i should do the following okay, this is a two dimensional picture but we are looking in three dimensions so x naught vector now what i want i want to localize here so i think of a function which looks like something like this you can take it to be a gaussian but doesn't have to be okay so what happens this f is zero away from x naught the moment you go a little further away from x naught it's vanishingly small it's very small so the major contribution to this integral comes from the region where x takes the value x naught so only from this region okay so then it's a phi only uh, when x is around x naught contributes to this so you are constructing a state which is localized around x naught okay in the in the limit you take fx to be a delta function so if you take fx to be um, delta cube of x minus x naught okay then of course this integral will give you f0 x naught so then it completely localizes but we are saying okay it's not a delta function but something sharply peaked around that okay so so now um, this fx is the wave function of this particle okay of the single particle state so that is what is localizing it around that is localized around x not at equal to 0 so you see if you have at x not a particle which is sharply localized here then it is given by phi acting on k0 but what we have done is we have multiplied with the function f and we have smeared it around okay what f does is it smears it around okay smear in hindi means potna okay kuch kisi cheez se pot dena so that is what it means you are smearing it around okay like like with your thumb so now that thing which was initially a sharply localized thing has now turned into this so that is why f of x is also called a smearing function okay good so now let's write this get f by uh, putting the expression of phi of x and we get integral d cube x f of x and what is phi phi is d cube k over 2 pi 3 halves 1 over 2 omega k and e to the minus i k dot x cat k okay this is an expression what we had on the previous page here this one that's what i have substituted here so i can write this as i will um, separate this k and x integrals and this I will write as d cube k over 2 pi 3 half 1 over 2 omega k correct so this I have taken care of okay then you, the x dependence is only in this exponential and f of x and there is an integral over this which is clearly a Fourier transform of f okay and um, yeah, sorry, because I'm using two pi three halves uh, in doing Fourier transforms. So I'm keeping uh, two pi three half both in the transform and the inverse transform. So I should be careful. So d cube k over times one over two omega k and times d cube x 1 over 2 pi 3 halves 
f of x e to the minus i k dot x that is f tilde of k that is the Fourier transform. Okay, that is right. So, I want to label this equation as equation 1 and this one as equation number 2. So, if you compare 1 with 2, what do you get that f tilde of k so is apart from some factor which is not very important for us right now this is what you get. So, f tilde of k which is the wave function in the Fourier space or the momentum space is given by this e to the minus i k dot x naught. Okay. For when you have constructed this state where the particle was localized at x naught okay. and this gives you a particle completely localized at x naught. Okay, that is the wave corresponding wave function in the momentum space okay, when you have complete localization. Now, if we go to the other extreme where I want the particle to be localized in momentum, then we have the following situation. So, if we want to localize uh, in around at k naught, okay, then what will be the f tilde of k? So, here if you want ket f to be uh, a single particle state with one precise momentum then f tilde k should be a delta function right. If you take delta cube of k minus k naught then only k naught will be picked up and that is what I am doing. So, apart from some factors that is what I should take okay. and in that case your f uh, the, the state would be. you can put factor of 2 omega k naught here and then you can get rid of this 1 over 2 omega k naught. Okay. But this is how it should look like f tilde of k should be proportional to a delta function and this gives you a f tilde k this gives you a particle localized at k naught. Okay. But these are not, uh, but these are the extremes which we do not want, they do not correspond to real particles. So, what should we do? So, let us choose f tilde of k to be e to the minus i k dot x naught. If you have only this, where is it? Here, then that corresponds to complete localization at x naught, but that is not what we want then if you have complete localization in k naught then you have delta function but instead of taking a delta function i will choose a sharply peaked uh, function like this at around k naught okay and in the limit uh, you take the width to be zero that goes to delta function so let's choose this thing any function will do which has similar feature but let's take gaussian for uh, to be specific some constant you can multiply and that will uh, to take care of normalizations but that is what the functional form of f tilde of k would be so now you see this one this wave function if you look at f tilde of k in the momentum space this is almost like a delta function this factor if sigma is very uh, small okay 
but it is now has a finite spread uh, depending on the value of sigma and you pick up value around k naught okay so this is the situation but then of course it is delocalized in space also and it is spread around value x naught so if you take f tilde k mod square that's the wave function for this particle in the momentum space then this goes away this factor goes away and you see that the f tilde k is just the square of this exponential okay so it tells you that the momentum is localized around k naught now if you want to know if you want to see how things are in the position space then you find out the wave function f of x right and how do you get f of x f of x is the inverse trans inverse transform so you should have um, e to the i plus i k dot x f to love k okay that's the inverse transform and calculate this and you will find the following you will find that f of x will be e to the plus i k naught dot x okay so there's a factor of k naught it's not x naught here it's k naught times e to the minus sigma square over 2 x minus x naught whole square so you see if you take mod f square then this function factor goes away and you have a square of this which is a sharply peaked um, function around x naught so it is the the wave modulus of wave function square uh, sorry the the square modulus of the wave function gives you the probability of finding that particle in in space right so you see that it is almost zero everywhere because of this function and it is non zero only around x naught so you see by choosing this f tilde of k or this f of x you construct particles which resemble real real particles okay that's good uh, that's a good starting point now we should look at how to construct two particle state and i'm interested in looking at a two particle state because when you are colliding particles your initial state contains two particles which are going to collide okay so I sh my state has these two particles and that is the state i want to construct so and again i am working in free theory So, what's a two particle state in a free theory which has in which the particles carry momentum k1 and k2 that's 2 omega k1 coming from the normalization and then you have a dagger k1 then you have 2 omega k2 square root of 2 omega k2 sorry a dagger k2 and these operators act on the vacuum of the free theory so how did how do we define a a two particle state which in which both the particles are localized around some uh, what are those uh, around some point in space and around some some value in momenta that's what we want to do and before i do that i should say that here um, for f tilde of k I will choose x naught to be 0 okay so I want that at time t equal to 0 the particle be localized at uh, origin okay so this factor goes away then and then your f tilde k is just some constant times e to the minus half whole square over sigma square okay at origin at t equal to 0 okay so coming back here um, I will define like for the single particle case I will define a state f1 f2 
and what is this this is all i am going to do is a uh, smear around point uh, smear around the value k not okay so i want to delocalize a bit d cube k over 2 omega k 1 f till 1 k 1 okay so this is a function of k 1 and of course also contains k not k 1 not okay if we are localizing the first particle around k 1 not so that it has a momentum k 1 not and then you have d cube k 2 2 omega k 2 f tilde 2 k 2 and then you have k 1 k 2 ok. So, this is a state which has precise momentum uh, momenta k 1 and k 2 ok these particles have these labels. Now, I am doing a uh, smearing around point k 1 0 and k 2 0. So, f 1 tilde k 1 also contains k 1 0 and f 2 tilde k 2 contains k 2. So, these are basically uh, functions of this form ok in the in the momentum space. This is around k 1 0 and that is around k 2 0. Or you do not have to take a Gaussian, but you can take that also and it will be apart from some normalizations it will be minus half k 1 minus k 1 0 k 1 minus k 1 0 ok some factors I can put a factor here, but I am not worried about the normalizations right now f 2 tilde k 2 ok and you see uh, here just like here I had removed this factor x naught uh, containing this factor x uh, containing x naught by putting x naught equal to 0 because that is what localizes this particle at the origin at t equal to 0 and I have done the same thing ok otherwise you would have had such factors, but now we want to localize particles at the origin ok and also we have we will choose k 1 to be different from k 2 0 k 1 0 and k 2 0 are different ok. So, both these wave functions momentum space wave functions p k at x equal to 0 ok that is because I have put x naught to be 0. Okay, so this is what we had in free. We have in free theory. Now our world is interacting world, and we want to construct similar things in interacting theory. And it is uh, not much different. Okay, just a second. ok so in interacting theory also for single particle states i will have the same thing i will define ket f to be d cube k over 2 omega k and then you multiply with some some smearing function something happened Okay. okay, and you can choose similar to exactly like this. Okay, if you want to use the Gaussians. And how about two particle state? Okay, 
Now here, um, so this is the state which we will have before the scattering, right? This is what we are constructing initial state. For the initial state again I will have F1, F2 and I will call it initial state in and this will be what d cube k1 over 2 omega k1 just like before and then you have f tilde k1 smearing function then you have integral d cube k2 over 2 omega k2 f tilde k2 and then what I should have k1 k2 Okay, this cat. But remember, we are constructing an initial state, an in state. And when we want to write in initial state, I should be using the basis, which is what we call in, uh, the basis of in states, right? So I should put this label in. See, at t equal to zero, all these are, these are Heisenberg states, right? So at t equal to zero, I have this vector space, the Hilbert space. And I can choose to work with the in states and in states are those states which when you evolve with uh, Schrodinger equation by, uh, with appropriate folding functions this like F1, F tilde does, okay, they give you a particle which are well separated in the far past. But the same in states do not give you particles which are well separated in the far future. So I cannot use out here, I can only use in state. If I were to construct a final state, just like this one, with f1, f2 out, then I should be using out states because they have this property that they give you well separated particles in the far future when evolved with Schrodinger equation and when you have folded them with right kind of functions. Okay, so that's the only thing which we have to uh, take care of when we are doing interacting theories that I should use in states. So, um, so what are the requirements? I want f tilde k1. In fact, this is f1, f2, f1, k1. Okay, this should peak around k1 zero. Okay, and I will use a Gaussian without this exponential factor of this kind okay so that the in the coordinate space in the position space it peaks around x equal to 0 and similarly f2 tilde k2 i want to again use a gaussian so that it peaks around k2 0 and x equal to 0 at time t equal to 0 Okay, so now we have constructed these states. Now we have to see how to get the information of scattering using uh, our quantum field theory, interacting quantum field theory. Okay, so that is what we will do next.